Hello, my name is Jacob Hofer, and for my final project, I researched Fourier series and Fourier transforms. So I wanted to first start off with a little bit of inspiration behind studying this topic in specific. I've always been very interested in how audio works, especially in a digital space, since I am a computer scientist. A lot of this is very important to the field that I want to go in one day, which is software development, as there's plenty of software out there that focuses on taking audio and manipulating it and visualizing it. And I've always been curious how we're able to take a whole bunch of essentially numbers that represent just a bunch of peaks of audio and decompose that down into specific frequencies and be able to present that to the end user in a very nice and understandable way without making everything just too complex. The first part of this is the Fourier series, which allows us to take in some periodic function of time, and in our case it's going to be functions with a period of one second, and we are able to compute big N number of constants where each constant represents the magnitude of a specific frequency. And we can achieve these constants using the integral that is on screen, which isolates one specific frequency and figures out how much that frequency contributes to the function over the entire period. And to use the notation of the integral that's on screen right now, little n represents that frequency that we are wanting to isolate. And now that we have a giant list of constants, we want to be able to use them to recreate an estimation of our original function. And we use that uh, as essentially a sum of sine and cosine waves, or equivalently, a sum of complex exponentials, since we know that e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, so those two statements are the exact same. We then take that sum from all of the negative frequencies and all of the positive frequencies, which is why you can see that we have negative n over 2 and positive n over 2. And when we take that, that will give us a good estimation of our original function of time. So to represent this idea, I've created a simple program in HTML and JavaScript that allows us to draw an image and we'll take the data and input it into MATLAB and it will perform the Fourier series algorithm on the image to recreate it as a sum of complex exponentials. So we're going to just draw a very simple image here. We're going to draw an M logo, and then we'll go and kind of make an arc over the top of it. And as you can see, I had to start and end at the same point, and that's because this assumes a cyclical function, and so our start and our end need to be the exact same, and if they weren't, this JavaScript uh, function would have just made a line in there. So we will download this and put it into MATLAB. So now that we are in MATLAB here, we've got our inputs, and it is called m.txt, and if we open it, it's just a giant matrix of a whole bunch of x and y coordinates between negative 1 and 1 that represent whatever it was that we drew on here. And we then are going to switch back to our MATLAB code, and if it'll open for us, there we go. And we will run the function Fourier image, which is this custom function that gives us, we have an input matrix file, which in our case is this m.txt, a number of constants to create, which are our c sub n, in our case we are going to do 100, num partitions, which is how many partitions we will have when calculating our integral for the Fourier series, and then the time steps, which is how many time steps to take when redrawing the image, since our time will go between 0 and 1. And if we run this function here, we get on the output here a nice drawing of our m, which, as we can see, is quite similar to what we have in our browser. And we can also run this on a couple of other inputs. My other favorite one is a sea turtle. And this one takes a little longer to calculate just because there's more points. And we can see this is obviously a sea turtle. Now there's some fun things that we can do with this. We can say decrease the number of constants down to something like 50. And we're not going to get nearly as accurate of a result. And if we go too low, say 10, we're hardly going to get anything that resembles our sea turtle. We can kind of see there's one fin, there's his tail, there's the other fin, and kind of his head. But overall, this is not a sea turtle. Or we can go the other way, and we can increase the number of points to the number of constants to 500. 
And as we can see, we get a very, very accurate drawing of what the original one was. And that's because as we increase more and more constants, it starts to converge to our original function, which our original function was a bunch of complex numbers just as a function of time. So now I want to introduce the idea of the actual Fourier transform. And the question behind this is, what about functions that are not periodic? And that is where this big equation comes into play. We've changed the notation a little bit. We are now using k to represent the frequency that we want to extract from the function. And this allows us to actually get a full function uh, that maps frequency versus magnitude, or possibly decibel levels if we're dealing with audio. This new function, however, doesn't have any time information since our integral was over the entire time domain, and so some of that information is lost when taking this transform, but it allows us to do really any function that we can throw at it. However, when we're dealing with audio, especially digital audio, it's not a continuous function, and rather it's just a collection of discrete points sampled at one specific rate. And usually that rate is around 48,000 hertz if it's a typical audio file, sometimes it's a bit higher, sometimes a bit lower, but usually that's the standard. And so we now introduce the idea of the discrete Fourier transform, or DFT, which is given by the equation below. This is very similar to the integral that we had before, but it's a sum, and instead of using time, we are now using little n over big N to represent how far along we are in time. And this essentially allows us to take the Fourier transform only using a finite amount of discrete points instead of a continuous function. So whenever we're working with discrete data, we often want to use the algorithm of fast Fourier transform, or FFT, since it runs in O of n log n time. And that's what is going to be used in MATLAB as well. And whenever we're using any form of a DFT, the data usually gives us some sort of symmetric values. So to even further optimize it, we only actually have to calculate the first half of the transformation since all of the data is going to be the exact same in the second half. So great, we can now quickly take the Fourier transform of a discrete set of points, but we have the problem of we still don't have any time information. And so, this is where spectrograms are useful. Spectrograms allow us to plot frequency, time, and magnitude, or possibly decibel, all on one image. It breaks down the input of our audio signal into small time windows that usually have some sort of overlap, and in my MATLAB code I used a window length of 10 milliseconds and an overlap of 50%. It then computes FFT for each window, um, however when we do that we do have to apply some windowing which essentially tapers the function to zero at the ends of it to prevent discontinuities and overall improves the output of FFT. Uh, and for this, we will use Hanning via MATLAB's hand function. Then, once the FFT is computed for each time window, we will put all the data into a matrix, normalize it, take the magnitude or decibels, in order to create the final image. So this is where things get fun. We now have two functions in MATLAB that I've created, one called Live FFT and one called Create Spectrogram. And Live FFT will give us a live Fourier transform of an input audio file. And that was just four simple notes on a piano with a decent amount of background noise. And we can then run the spectrogram on it, and we get a couple of different figures. The first one is just the basic waveform, the second is the Fourier transform of the entire thing, but the last one is what we actually care about, the spectrogram. And on the bottom we have our time, on the side we have our frequencies, and then the color represents the decibel level of that frequency. And we can very clearly see our four piano notes here, with these sharper edges, with each of them having a bit more higher frequencies as, as it goes. We can also see a lot of the background noise represented by this green here that was also present in the audio clip. We can also look at this for a song, in this case, Stars by the band Switchfoot. And then here's the computed spectrogram, with the beginning of the song being a little bit quieter before going really loud and continuing for the majority of the song, and then tapering off towards the end. 
And here are links to all of the sources I used when creating these simulations. And the GitHub code is also listed on there, and all of these will be linked in the description of the video.